Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki and I'm here with Zen. Hello. And what's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire well-beings and physical selves to watching all Shonen Jump anime and uh, live-action series when we get to them. There's plenty of them now. There's now act They just actually released the trailer as we're recording this for the... They didn't release a trailer. They released a... We're still working on the Yu Yu Hakusho live action One Piece and the one live action series on Netflix. Um, where we'll go through all that. Um, the main series we're currently going through is the main big one that we've been doing since the start of this series is Gintama, talking about Kuroko's basketball and also uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. Today we're going to be talking about Gintama. Back at it after a long absence because of how I was just unever I was unable to see these episodes in time, uh, and finally I was able to see them. And Zen watched these a bit ago, so I'm going to be the one handling the talking about bits of this one. Now let me very quickly scroll down through my notes. I talk a lot on Twitter, so I have to <laughs> go through and find <laughs> exactly Watch where speech happening. Yeah, you can follow me on uh, on Twitter as long as it's still around. <laughs> Who knows for how much longer, but... Yeah, I, I, you know, there's a time limit on that, but... Yeah, I'm also on uh, Bisque Social, if you want to actually go there. <laughs> I was able to... <laughs> what a blue sky? Yeah, I'm down there. Yeah, let me put it up. Hell I'm there yeah, as, as Wokey. I was actually able to secure at Wokey, Bisk. I have three followers. Who the fuck is following me on here? I should follow them back. <laughs> One moment live of me following back the people who followed me. I don't know how you're supposed to do this all over again. It's a damn shame that it's being destroyed as we go on. But, you know, we do what we can. Anyway. Yeah, that's what you gotta do. Yeah, exactly. It's only a matter of time now. Anyway, we're talking about episodes... Uh, 160 through 165. All right, so I'm going to be taking over for this. Uh, episode 160, this begins again with that, the, the running joke of that opening sequence of the dudes who are like the, 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 the not the game show, but like the, the show inside the show. And I think they say like, hey, this is the last one of these. Uh, I think this is the one where they keep saying we're gonna go, we're gonna cut to a commercial, we're gonna cut to a commercial, we're gonna cut to a commercial, <laughs> we're out of commercials, we're gonna cut to Gintama, and then they cut to the start of this episode right here. Uh, so what happened here is that um, the Sinsengumi and the Terracado Sioux fan club finished. I uh, made it to the finish line, and after. Bringing up, the, I think Hijikata accuses them of cheating because it's very clear. The last time we left off, uh, Takatin had been replaced with a foreigner who uh, they called him uh, Takachin, and this one's Takatin, aka Hulk Hogan. Loves French yeah, he's bread. Just Hulk Hogan. Yeah, <laughs> he's literally just Hulk Hogan. And Hijikata starts to run up and say, like, how could you have. First of all, this guy is not even the same person. And uh, Gintoki says, you don't understand. When you run a marathon, it changes a man. And that's what happened to, Taka, Tata, to Takatin over here. Is that he changed to, during the course of it. He's like, that is physically impossible to change in what you're talking about. He doesn't even look like he's the same race that he was beforehand. And he goes like, what about your own? And that's when um, the... What is his? I can't believe I'm forgetting Racket Man's name at the moment. Oh yeah, Yasu, Yama Yamazaki. It's going to be very Yamazaki. important because Yamazaki is going to show I was, up. I was about to say Yamagawa. I was mixing up him and Hasegawa. <laughs> the ultimate fusion. Um, yeah. He arrives and he's wearing a mohawk and he tells. Um, and Gintoki uses that as an example. Like, look how much he's changed since the last you saw him. And he tells them to let it go because unfortunately they have. Uh, their number on this and he goes what do you mean and then uh, right at that moment okita arrives in the cab um that hit takachin which is the reason that they had to replace him so it's 100 percent their fault and also they're breaking the rules as we're talking right now um and then another cab arrives and it has kondo and kagura and they both um they both arrive because they both went the wrong way and they start getting into an argument about saying about like 
how could you be so stupid as to go as to use a car in a marathon and get lost he's like well how stupid are you to not realize how stupid we would be in this exact situation (laughs) um otsu then says um if you were willing to break the rules and use a card to come to me, that must mean you must really love me. Therefore, I'm going to let it go. Basically, she air buds it, saying there's nothing in the rule books that says a dog can't play basketball. <laughs> so she... Yeah, she, she, think she doesn't she do that multiple times? She, she's like, that's, that's love to me. That's love to me. And this causes a, almost a riot among all the otaku who then goes, we could have just used the car. <laughs> we didn't have to run. <laughs> So anyway, uh, Shinpachi and Hijikata's groups are both in the finals. Um, as they get started, it is a five. It is a is it's a four on four with uh, Yamazaki, Kondo, Okita, and Hijikata on one side, and the other one we have Takatin, Gin, Toki, Kagura, and Shinpachi, who is missing at the start of this. Um, they're going to participate in a multiple contest, and the first contest that's going to be is going to be a quiz, uh, where it's basically how well do you know Otsu? And right before they get started, and then right when they start, um, Shinpachi arrives and he tells them, uh, "Hey, what's going on? Did you guys start without me?" And we learned that they actually just assumed that he was with them the entire time, and they were just using a pair of glasses. The pair of glasses end up falling into the pool, which is what they use to kind of like say, like, "Hey, if you fall into the pool uh, from these water slides, um, it means that you're disqualified and out." And they take it that Shimpachi is out because his glasses fell in the water when he was not even there, so he's not a part of it anymore. Uh, Shimpachi tries to fight and says, "Like, this is unfair. You guys literally started without me." Uh, you also said that we had unlimited time to make the finish line, so I took my time to get here. Uh, and he says, that's too bad. Doesn't matter. And this, <laughs> and so he is disqualified from the only event he would likely win uh, easily, because he is the only, he's also the only person who knows Otsu. Uh, because, again, um, Hijikata doesn't really care all that much about the idol stuff, he just wants it for uh, Toshi. Um, so they start to this the game starts uh hijikata ends up uh getting eliminated because he answers a question he answers it correctly but he doesn't add an otsu suffix which is when she says like die spaghetti pasta <laughs> he doesn't do one of those <laughs> <laughs> uh so both of them are now forced to rely on their teammates um <laughs> Takatin and this is where they start uh Takatin starts uh, answering all the he starts buzzing in uh, and he starts answering stuff like, oh, when what did um, Otsu say when she was super nervous? And he starts saying, like, I would like to go to the bathroom. And then he adds in one of her suffixes, like, die, dirty stiletto, or something like that. It's one of those. <laughs> uh, and Shibaji goes, like, he just needs to go to the bathroom. He doesn't care or give anything about Otsu. And it turns out that's actually the correct answer. She did say that when she was nervous during her first one. Um, so she goes to raise Hijikata's team's... Um, uh, water slide and she only <laughs> increases condos uh this happens two more times where Takatin starts answering questions the next one he doesn't even wait for them to say anything <laughs> he just goes there and he starts saying i really need to go to the bathroom uh but he can he puts in the otsu suffix at the end and then uh she goes no that's right i did say that how did he <laughs> he's able to answer all the questions and then at the end of the, the God, it's so funny because Kentucky and Kagura start hyping him up, going, Go, Takatin! Go, go, Takatin! And uh, Kentucky keeps trying to, try to say, like, Okay, let's do the, 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 the pat thing that we do. And it's very clear Takatin actually just needs to use the bathroom. Um, and then he ends up shitting himself. Uh, and that's for the third question. Uh, and at this point, Shipaji says, Please just eliminate him so he can go and <laughs> hide his shame. <laughs> from what he's done uh but it turns out he's correct and uh kondo now is uh his water slide is all the way in the opposite direction he's like that's like upside down yes and then he asks the question uh do you just hate me and he says that to otsu and otsu then completely eliminates all of shinpachi's team because he basically answered the ultimate question which is that he otsu cannot stand kondo for whatever reason um 
And that is the end of the episode, basically. It ends with uh, Hijikata's team winning completely out of nowhere by Kondo cussing correctly that a woman does not like him. Uh, I really like the joke in this one, mm -hmm. where they set everyone up on the water slides, and Shinpachi, they just put his glasses in the water slide, and they just slide off into the water. <laughs> and the announcer's like, what a horrible blunder by <laughs> Shinpachi. <laughs> And everyone's like, no, Shibachi, it's just the glasses floating in the water. It is really funny. Um, it's very well done. This is a very silly episode. I forgot the name of this episode is, from a foreigner's perspective, you're the foreigner. From an alien's perspective, you're the alien. Which is probably uh, playing around Takatin's uh, inability to really say it, because he is a foreigner who really just likes bread. Uh, for me, a lot of this is just the fact that they kept cutting back to this Hulk Hogan-like character, and <laughs> he was progressively getting uh, the more, he was getting things more right, but he was genuinely just asking, can I please go to the bathroom? <laughs> I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> and he's unable to be understood at all, as Kagura hype him up in the background, along with Gintoki. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Um... This entire, like, quiz show being on the whims of Otsu, I think, is also pretty funny. Like, this seems very... Up until, I think, the very final episode in this arc, a lot of this seems just to be on the whim of how Otsu feels at that exact moment. Well, it I think they just straight up say that at one point. They're just like, this is an Otsu show, so you just <laughs> do what Otsu says. Yeah, so it really feels that way as they win or fail based off of multiple things. As they, It seems like both teams, when they win, it is never because they were following the rules. It's always because at that exact moment, Otsu feels like they won. <laughs> yeah, Otsu just happens to like vibe with them at that moment. Yeah, and it works out perfectly. Uh, but yeah, I ended up liking this episode. I am a big sucker for anime episodes where characters just answer questions it's like the probably the easiest thing in the world to animate but for some reason i'm always really uh, i really dig episodes like this where it's just characters going like oh yeah let me just answer that question and you're wrong or you're right <laughs> so this worked out for me pretty well uh how do you feel about it zen uh, it wasn't bad i uh I didn't love a lot of the previous ones, like the marathon. I was like, okay, this is getting kind of old. But the the trivia show was pretty funny, when when like all she did was move Kondo's thing further. It's like <laughs> this is pretty like, this is pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, this, it was it was better than the previous ones. Yeah. My, yeah, I feel as as this arc actually continues on, I feel like it's much better than how it started. Where it's like I feel it starts at a very low. Like, it starts similar to how the feeling of Gintoki, where this arc starts with Gintoki saying, can we really not adapt this? Why <laughs> why are we doing this? And you kind of feel that, but I feel like by the end, I was kind of digging it all. But let's move on to the next episode, which is episode 161. Let me see if I had anything else. Uh... Yeah, okay, perfect. This is where my notes start for the next one. Episode 161, which is called... Oh my god, this episode. Lupita's still good after seeing it many times, uh, which is a real, this is a, the ultimate testament of how many Ghibli films have you watched, which for Zen, I believe, is zero. <laughs> a big fat zero, baby. Man, that's still crazy to me that you've seen zero Ghibli. Man, not one. Not a one. They're fantastic films, Zen. <laughs> if you ever get the chance to see them. Studio Ghibli, unfortunately, no longer really around anymore because I think they've just recently announced that they sold it off and that's basically the end of it. Though, for many, uh, it probably is considered the end the second that uh, Miyazaki actually passes because there's just no actual... They're, they don't have really a plan in place for when the main artistic guy behind the entire endeavor of the company is gone. I think their idea was just, I guess what company's just done then? <laughs> they didn't really have <laughs> I guess a... it's over. Yeah. All right, let's get into this episode. So, they are and the two teams are entering a charisma contest where they have to hit on Otsu um, and try to get her to a place where it's nice and quiet and accommodating, which is uh, what they which they show as a love hotel. And this also gets a lot of the otakus going like, "How dare you say you're going?" It's like, "No, no, you're not actually taking her to a real ho a love hotel. It's a digital one. It's okay. <laughs> it's not real." Obviously, if everyone at this point knows, if you've watched any Japanese media, a love hotel is something in Japan where you go to uh, apparently bone down. 
Yeah, because uh, there's just gotta, not gotta hit Plowtown. Yeah, that's great. That the, 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 the space is so cramped in Japan that there's literally just dedicated places. Where it's like, do you want to go to Pound Town, but you don't want your, like your grandpa to know because <laughs> he's in yeah. the room? You know, I want your family to know that you are currently pounding down. Then go here. Go ahead. That's crazy to me. Who would have known? Uh, also, another fun fact, Nintendo used to be in the Love Hotel business way back in the day. <laughs> That's I mean, hilarious. I did not know that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they... St- I think there might still be some uh, around, actually. Uh, let me double-check on this just to be sure. Um, They likely don't do it anymore. But I it was, would assume not. It was back in the 1960s. It was a different time. Technically still very family-oriented, if you think about it. But anyway... You have to go to uh, a love hotel, so they both have to figure out charisma points to kind of get there and hit, figure out a way to hit on Otsu. Um, the it starts with the Shinsengumi going first, uh, or the Susengumi. Uh, my bad, that's what they're called here. Um, the, basically, there's going to yeah, be two <laughs> the Susengumi. Uh, basically, the way it breaks down is that there's going to be one person who is going to be in charge of hitting on Otsu. Which in this case, it is Hijikata. One person is going to be the narrator for the scene, which is going to be Okita. And the other two are basically your hype men. Um, They will try and make it so that you can make it easier to flirt with her, basically. So they start off... um, They start narrating... um, this scene in a bar, they're in a high upscale bar with Kondo playing a bartender and Yamazaki playing um, Otsu's friend. With, with when the reveal of that uh, Yamazaki is actually uh, a woman in this virtual world that they created, where he goes like, why would you make yourself a woman? This makes no sense. Um... But go for it. They're 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 cooking right now. They're cooking up the the most devious hit on that you've ever seen in this scenario. <laughs> um, they Kondo and the bartender start talking about um, Studio Ghibli films, specifically Lupita, um, with uh, Kondo and Yamazaki. This is all before Otsu ever enters the scene, and Okita is also joining them as the narrator, where he starts to describe. Um, who his favorite girl is where it's like (laughs) no i think they don't start talking about that finally otsu enters the scene and yamazaki says like hey check it out i was arguing with this guy over here about um uh who is the best ghibli girl and then that's when they start going and then this is when they start doing like some really weird uh narration where i think for okita when he goes to kondo's bartender he goes like he wasn't a pedo but if he had to choose between Sasuke and Bay, he'd go with Sasuke, which is a character from uh, My Neighbor Totoro. Both of these are little girls, and he has like this like little gleam in his smile, which I was like, God damn it, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> this is insane. Okita starts talking about what girl from Ghibli he would like most. He's like, it's actually, he says, I would really be down with for Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service, because it's actually easier to break in girls who have a lot of pride. Once you've broken their self-respect, uh, they're weaker than most people on the inside. <laughs> uh, the ones with the hard shell fall even harder, and then at this Hijikata's thing is like, "What are you saying? Don't, <laughs> don't defile Ghibli with your words." <laughs> um, they start just hardcore hamming, talking about Ghibli. It's like they argue, they are like um, Yamazaki's up in Kondo's face. Where he's like, uh, <laughs> he's shaking his neck, um, making it very uncomfortable for the two people who are actually aren't super talking about Ghibli. And that's when Hitchcock it hits him. They've created a situation where both of them don't fit in in the current situation that they're in. Um, and they're outsiders, and Hijikata says, both feeling lonely like the outsiders of a group, like two people who came to the city from the country and feel left out in a party. So... That's when Yamazaki and Kondo both look at uh, Hijikata without saying it, but in their mind they go, Now! This is your opportunity! <laughs> so Hijikata <laughs> invites Otsu to go outside with him. 
and they end up going to the hotel in the sky, which is <laughs> which is the the, uh, the which is what Lupita comes from. It is the uh, the castle in the sky, Lupita, and at the, as they run towards it, goes, the Lupita really exists, and it's the hotel in the sky, and it ends with Hijikata being able to take Otsu to the uh, love hotel, and it it is not shown, but it is implied digital love making. Uh, and they cut back to the real world where every single otaku is extremely pissed about what they just witnessed. As Otsu is then said, like, I was lost in the moment. I really felt like we had something in that exact moment and I took him to the hotel room. <laughs> I just kind of went along with it. I wasn't really thinking that hard about it, about whether I liked him. Because, again, he was able to take her there without flirting at all all he said is would you like to go and she immediately agreed to go with him uh it's amazing it is beautiful it is perhaps the greatest i don't know if you had the same rele re uh re revelations then but i was watching it when he said like wait a minute he they've separated us now we're both outsiders in this specific group and i said no fucking way is this going to work out the way that you think it's going to work out and it totally does and it's amazing it is maybe the sickest i've ever seen someone get down due to to people aggressively arguing over what ghibli girl is the best out of all of them <laughs> it is beautiful and that is only half the episode and now we'll go into the other half, which is now it's time for the Terracotta Sioux fan club to try and do their stuff. Um, Shinpachi says that we're going to have a lot of issues here because uh, Takatin doesn't speak English. So most of their time was spent trying to make him understand the rules of the game. Uh, in this specific instance, um, Shinpachi is going to be the one who is going to be in charge of the flirting. Otsu and uh, Takatin are going to be his backups. And Gintoki is the narrator. Uh, and it ends up being a parody of Journey to the West <laughs> with uh, Otsu as Sanzo, Shinpachi as Goku, Takatin as Go Gojo, and Kogre not Gojo, Goyo, the, the pig guy, and Kagura as Hakai. Um, it has absolutely nothing to do with romance. <laughs> and the, he, uh, the, uh, Gintoki specifically says the goal here is actually to reach the Kingdom of Gods. And I think they call it like the Gandora Vu Hotel, which sounds exactly like the Grand Love Hotel. <laughs> and right as they start, uh, Otsu refuses to participate. Uh, she says, that's clearly just you trying to take, this is stupid. You're just clearly trying to make me go to the Love Hotel by this way. And the narrator goes like, no, 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 it's not like that. Come on, <laughs> try it, try it out. You're going to like it. Uh, he goes like, you know what? I'm going to make it better for you. I'm going to change the name. He changes it to, uh, he decides to change Gandora Hotel into a hotel chain instead of a love hotel and also still refuses to enter. Uh, at this point, the narrator gets extremely frustrated and he becomes a physical entity as he bombs himself out of the, like the narration is being told in like the drop down kind of Japanese language. And when Otsu just refuses to go inside the hotel, he's like, fine, whatever. And he breaks out and he goes, make, uh, do whatever you want. Stand, stand outside if for all I care. Um... <laughs> And then for the next couple days, that's exactly what happens. Otsu stays outside while her protectors are inside the building, having, like, a party. Uh, and then she starts narrating, and she says uh, that she feels lonely, and she wants to be with her friends, but she's also wondering if because of the things that she's done, maybe she can't be with them because of how big of a stink she's done. Uh, she also starts to wonder why there's so many demon footprints that surround her. Um, and she finally finds the answer because one night when she wakes up, she sees that her protectors were all around her, making guarding her while she was sleeping outside. Um, and the narrator, as Neri comes up and says, like, whatever, because they cared about you so much, they decided to stay. Um, they decided to stay next to you instead of side of the hotel. Um, and also, you should feel bad about yourself that we uh, that they ever had dirty intentions about taking you to this hotel. <laughs> And so he says, all right, I'm, you know, they're going to be here. What do I need to be here? And then it's revealed when he's leaving that he has sand on his butt, meaning that he was also watching over her during this entire time. Um, and also realizes that Neri, Neri was also trying to protect her. Um, and it ends with Otsu finally saying, I want to go inside the hotel and I want to be with my friends. And the simulation ends and it's a huge success. 
Um, Hijikata immediately says, this is bullshit. Halfway through, she turned into the narrator. (laughs) And she goes, I like that story. I choose them. (laughs) And so they win. (laughs) We're making it a tie. And the final match will decide everything in the next episode. And that is the end of episode 161. Uh, Zen, how do you feel about this one? Uh, it was alright. I, I liked the previous one more. It was just funnier. Um, but I, I really liked the... Just the whole, like, uh, there's really no rules, because it's just whatever Otsu says <laughs> happens. Mm-hmm. If, if Otsu decides it's okay, it happens. And it, it was funny when uh, they kind of was all pissed off, and she's like, no. <laughs> I, I pick this. I, I, I choose the winner here, and this is how it goes. Um... Yeah, I really like this one. This one this one might actually except for the last episode in this arc, this one might actually be my second favorite of this one. The as a big fan of Ghibli, that conversation that they were having, there's also I've also been a part of conversations where once enough people who are Ghibli fans are put next to each other where there's passionate arguments about Ghibli films. <laughs> so the fact that they were saying this and then also framing it as a like, oh yeah, the two people who are just like, yeah, it's cool. But they aren't necessarily into the fun. <laughs> they're not, like, that passionate about it where they're, like, seeing people actually literally throw in hands with each other. It is uh, amazing. It is hilarious. Uh, Okita as a narrator is fucking hilarious when Hijikata's like, okay. The, the wait up for Hijikata to be like, this is them setting me up. And then Okita's just immediately like, oh, man, let me tell you more about uh, Lupita in the sky. They play it every New Year's. And I think it really does get better every single time you see it. Then to the point where, like, the bartender's like, oh, yeah. And he's, like, doing this, like, weird gyration dance the entire time that he's doing up there. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, let me tell you about Ghibli themselves. And then Yamazaki shows up and he did starts talking about Ghibli. And he's kind of like, I need you all to focus. We're going to lose. And then Akita just stops narrating and just joins the conversation. <laughs> that fucking quote he says about the reason why he likes Kiki so much that it's so much easier to break a hard world girl. <laughs> it's so funny. And it's, uh, it's insane. Um, and th- just all the references, like, to the fact that they run off to the, the castle in the sky at the end. It's really well done. And obviously the Journey of the West stuff was also really good as someone who's a big fan of, not Journey to the West, big fan of Dragon Ball. <laughs> Though I do yeah. like, uh, <laughs> I do, I am familiar enough with the story, funny enough, because of Fake Grand Order, uh, where they did an entire story based off of Journey to the West. So I get it from both sides, the Dragon Ball side and the Fate side. So it was very nice. I ended up liking it and enjoying it. And uh, it ends up going into the next one. Let's go right into it. Because this one almost feel This really made me feel like maybe this is a sign. We should go back to Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, this is the Yu-Gi-Oh! episode, isn't it? Yes, this is the Yu-Gi-Oh! episode. Episode 162, yeah. Love is Unconditional. Um... So the final battle starts uh, in the boxing ring. Hey, Chikata and Shibachi, it looks like they're going to be fighting each other. Because um, the boxing ring shows up and the host announced that this is going to be the final bout. Shibachi and Hijikata enter. Um, and they are told immediately that we, they are not going to be boxing. Instead, because of how poorly they're selling, uh, you're going to be getting the cards from the Oso chips. And... Du- dueling against each other basically um and they also they reveal also why the chips are failing because it's like one more bless you sorry i had to sneeze i think i was able to block the the, the mic in time we heard um, a little bit okay only the beginning part of it <laughs> yeah the um, beginning wind up yes the wind up before but not the punch uh, basically, the chips are like weird Otsu flavors, where it's like, yeah, uh, vinegar, chili, whatever. It's it's a really strange chip, so of course no one would buy them. Um, and not even uh, uh, Shimpachi has any of them. That's how badly that the taste of it would have been. So he's like, surely Hijikata doesn't have any collection of cards. And then we see that Hijikata actually has a fuck ton of cards. <laughs> he has, I think, every single card yeah, from... Like- all of them, right? Yeah, he has all of them. He's uh, definitely the Kaiba in this situation, and Shinpachi has none of them. So he tells Gigantoki, go out and buy me some chips. I need cards. And li- literally, also, the things that they get to start the game are literally the dual discs from Duelist Kingdom. 
They have yeah, like, but not, not dual discs like you're thinking from Battle City. It's it's the reason that they're called dual discs was because in Duelist Kingdom it was that stupid fucking frisbee. Yes, that Kaiba would throw out. Yeah, and that's yeah. what they have here. Kaiba's great plan to stop Pegasus, which is like obviously he's cheating using the field, so I'm gonna make him use my dual disc. It's gonna go great, and then Kai- Pegasus goes like, mm, "Mokuba's gonna use it. Never mind then." <laughs> yeah. All right, forget it. I'm gonna throw away my advantage and lose the tune blue eyes. <laughs> uh, great stuff. Um, so he sends the Guntoki to buy a bunch of chips. Um, Hijikata plays his first card. He summons Otsu, which is the sentimental five. <laughs> Otsu sentimental five minutes before curtain. <laughs> Uh, and that chases Shimpachi around with a guitar. Uh, Kintoki returns, and he throws him a bag of chips. And he counters by summoning the basis Kim, which is not an Otsu card, and that actually triggers Otsu's sentimental special ability, um, <clears throat> which increases her power, which is after seeing Kim, Otsu's attack power goes up, and then Shimpachi takes a direct hit from the attack, losing, losing like, half his life points. Uh, they also are using straight up, like, the life point counter where yeah, i think it's, they it's just Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, yeah i think they both have four thousand life points at the start uh hijikata powers up otsu um using that day of the month card which triples her attacks but prevents hijikata from drawing a card on the next round um Kintoki and kagura from even more chips and he opens a bunch of them and he all he pulls are the basis kim um so he decides to do one last bag of otsu chips and he opens it um uh, as the he as uh, Otsu goes for the final attack, and at the last second, he was able to pull a uh, card that makes it so that if you have Kim, uh, he sacrifices his facial mole, and that prevents you from taking any damage that turn. Uh, Hitchcock is not able to draw, and since he's not able to attack with um, Otsu, he has to pass. Um... So Hijikata, uh, not Hijikata, Shimpachi then goes for another bag of chips, and he's able to summon the drummer Kiyoshi, who has uh, a specific effect that says, like, he currently has weird beef with Kim, where you're able to solve it because, because uh, someone took the pizza, someone took a pizza, someone's pizza, and they're having weird beef about it, so the only way for them to share together again, or for the beef to be settled, is either through a pizza to break the tension, or for money, um, which uh, Shinpachi obviously has neither cards of. Um, Hijikata summons the stylist Miyabi, who raises Otsu's attack power by a thousand, and she goes for the final attack. Uh, Shinpachi hearts of the cards it and decides to play Mysterious in- Investigation. Um, and the card, is ba- the card basically says it will reveal something, so he doesn't know what that is, but he just says, whatever, it's my only hope, he plays it. Uh, the card reveals that Miyabi, which is the card that uh, Hijikata play, was actually the bastard who ate the band's pizza. So Kim and Kiyoshi decide to squash the beef and start playing a song called The Makeup Session, which doubles Otsu's sentimental attack and mirrors it back to Hijikata. And that is where the episode ends with um, the attack about to be hit back on Hijikata. And that was that episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Yeah, it's just a Yu-Gi-Oh! episode. It is crazy how much this is literally just a Yu-Gi-Oh! episode. Like, the life point counters, they actually both had 2,000 life points. It's just literally idle um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, they do a really good job of capturing like how the actual beats in Yu-Gi-Oh! go down. <laughs> To the point where I was just like, you know, it's it's like straight up like uh, the flow is the same. It's not just like oh they play cards. It's like the flow of how duels go. Yeah, it is crazy. Dead. This is uh, this was obviously put down by someone who has seen a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh. Because <laughs> even down to like the card explanations and everything, uh, it explains it all. It's it's amazing. Um, so I thought it was really nice. I thought it was a really, like, just like, oh, man. I was just, it, like, I don't think there was anything that was, like, too funny to me. But it was just definitely a feeling of, like, yeah, this is just straight up Yu-Gi-Oh. And I'm just kind of digging the the research <laughs> that went into getting the exact mm-hmm. flow of it all down. Like, at some point, you just got to hand it to them. <laughs> and be like, all right, good. That's how I feel. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, I liked it. It was funny. I liked all the Yu-Gi-Oh references. Um... 
I liked that that Osu just fucking hates her bassist <laughs> really like a lot. <laughs> so all the effects of the bassist cars are just like Osu gets fucking pissed and tries to kill you. Yeah, that's a that's uh, amazing. Uh, I thought that was funny. Yeah, and then I, I like because earlier on they were talking about like, isn't that the basis where Osu like the rumor that she ripped his mole off, and then the card effect is that the mole gets ripped off <laughs> and it protects you. Perfect setup. Yeah, check off his mole. Check off his mole. Uh, yeah, but it was it was good. I yeah. like it. I, I'm a sucker for Yu Gi Oh though. So S- that, same that probably helps. Yeah, I think we're in the same boat here. Where we're just like, yeah, that's just really good. <laughs> that's a fantastic. A uh, little parody of Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm down for it. A quick 22 minutes. Fantastic. Uh, let's move on to the final episode of this arc. Episode 163. The black ships even make a scene when they sink. Okay, so continuing from the last episode, Hijikata um, is struggling because uh, the blast is basically taking down, ticking down his life points and he starts to panic. Toshi then says, hey... Let me finish this. And I just realized they did the full-on Yu-Gi-Oh! thing. A Tem stepped up. Yeah. <laughs> this started yeah. as a Ninetales thing. Really yeah. And oh my god, that actually makes it all so much better. <laughs> but he steps in and he does a thing where he draws a card that cancels the entire round. Basically saying like, it's basically like Wrath of God. Where it's exiles, all cards on fields, all effects, everything is gone, and they both end up wiping at zero life points and are out cold. Um, they then struggle to their feet, um, and then they start taking off their items, and they just start just fucking punching each other. Uh, Otsu at this point says, "Like, hey, stop it! This is not how I actually want this to go down. I don't want to see anybody actually hurt." And Gintoki says. Um, it's no use. They're not fighting for that anymore. Um, um, after they kind of, they fight a little bit and they get, uh, they separate, they like take a, a break from punching each other. Uh, Shinpachi says like, I know that it's, uh, Toshi and it's not Hijikata. Cause if that was Hijikata punching me, I would not be standing. F- which thankfully makes me go like, oh, thank God for bringing up the power level discussion. Cause I was about to say if that was actually hijikata he would be knocked the fuck out (laughs) yeah he would have been absolutely blasted yes so you asked toshi why are you letting hijikata win uh why aren't you letting hijikata do the fight for you because if it was actually hijikata he would win um toshi asked him basically well let me ask you this why are you fighting when the person that you one of the people you love most is literally begging you to stop and he goes, mm, I guess you're right on that. And they start. They continue to start wailing on each other. Um, Toshi starts to mentally talk about like his life, specifically about what he lived. And he said, like, I wanted to be King Otaku, but what I realized, this is actually what I wanted. I wanted to make memories. I wanted to be someone that would actually be remembered. I wanted to have something where I could say I existed. Um... I didn't want to be the number one thing. I think I actually just wanted someone to share my hobbies with, and I feel like I finally have that with Shimpachi, who is my otaku rival. Um, and he thinks that they're both kind of feeling the same way with each other. Um, they go for a punch on each other, and they both knock each other out. Um, the crowd, uh, uh, the the Shinsengumi, the Shinsengumi. And the Yorozuku are all telling him, like, hey, get up. You can't just let it end this way. Get your ass up. I know that's not enough to take you out. And they both get up and they continue to fight each other. Uh, they two, both of them do a double attack at each other. And it ends with Toshi thanking everyone um, for the send off, especially Shimbachi and Hijikata. And then sometime later, we see Hijikata's paying respects to Toshi, who is. <laughs> They use a picture of Toshi, but it's actually when Hijikata was pretending to be Toshi. So he tells Yamazaki that you need to swap out the the picture. Because this entire thing was about him being remembered. What if he comes back and he sees that his picture is not the one being respected? Um, and he goes, okay, fine. Uh, and then they say, like, so he says, like, so what happened after all that? He says, like, well, Shimpachi turned down the chance to be Otsu's official fan club. Um, and is slowly regrowing the numbers of people that he lost. 
Um, uh, and so the reason is that this, since there's no official fan club, that Shimpachi decided to do something different. Um, he shows Hijikata uh, something. And Hijikata goes like, that, that's annoying. I don't want to be in anyone's debt. So I'm going to help them ret- restore their stupid members. And he goes off to go gather them up and make force them to return to Shimpachi's group. Um, and he goes, well, you're going to be doing that. You're going to have to do a lot because that's a huge debt that he's actually left behind for you. Uh, he says like, well, I can use this picture for this for Toshi because this is actually a picture of him. And it turns out that what Shinpachi did is that he let Toshi become the first and only member of the official fan club. So it ends with them putting in, in the shrine uh, a picture of Toshi, where it says the number one uh, fan club for Otsu. And it, that is where the episode ends. And the episode also ends with uh, a quick look back of the arc set to the ending song, which is Asa Answer. Which I actually feel like it fits very well with the silly arc that we have here. <laughs> the yeah which is uh, which is a shame because this is also the end of the asa answers ending and i really like this ed <laughs> um but the next one thankfully is actually pretty good so i, I can't say yeah i do like i do like the new one yeah the new, new one also has one of my favorite ending clips or like like images in it yeah we'll, we'll talk about that because it's it's pretty good the next they really this one was i feel like this ed was super good and they replaced it with something that is equally as good, so I can't complain too much. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Uh, that is the end of this arc, then. How do you feel after all this? Uh, I really liked it. I thought that it was a, one of those like endings to a Gintama arc. Where you're like, is this actually kind of sweet for the dumbest thing on the planet? Um, yeah. It was like, oh, well, that's actually kind of cute, even though this is incredibly stupid. Uh, yeah. um, was, I don't know. It was it was fun. Yeah, I I, f- I was, was feeling was the same fun. kind of way, where they were trying. I think they they recon they reconceptualize a lot of recontextualize. Yeah, there you go. I think I accidentally said reconceptualize, which is a completely different than <laughs> not a real word. It also sounds completely wrong, but it kind of sets a better idea of what Toshi actually wanted and what he's been wanting the entire time and why he can't move on. And it's a really true thing that probably a lot of... Um, it feels realistic for an otaku who actually comes back from the dead to be like, well, I feel like I didn't actually get what I wanted. The, what I wanted in life was specifically... I th- this is what I thought I wanted in life, but now that I'm actually out here living life and I'm fighting back and I'm like with someone and I'm making memories, that's what I want. Is that it's not enough to be remembered in the sense of like... Oh, any like anyone, for example, can be remembered by being like the best at something, like being the best at like having the number one score in Pac-Man, for example. You could have the number one score in Pac-Man, and your name goes down, and people remember you. But that's different from being remembered by people who you actually want to have remember, like friends, for example, where where it's people making actual memories of going out there and having this dumb contest and you're out here answering questions and you're taking girls to a love hotel and you're doing all this like dumb stupid thing you're ruining marathons <laughs> you're having a foreigner uh pretend to be someone else you're doing all these like dumb little things that are related to your hobby and that's completely different from being remembered as someone who's a little bit more famous for something and i feel like that ends up being that ends up feeling like a much better thing he, he realizes it really at the end where he's like i think this is actually what i wanted yes i want to be remembered but not in that way and i only realize it here at the end when i'm here standing in the ring and i'm just fucking punching it out with someone that i consider my rival who is uh someone who's ultra interested in me who's into the same stupid ideas as me and we're out here just living life that is the thing that he could never have, is that he, because of the otaku life that he had, he could never live life. And now he's out here living the life that he wished he had when he was, uh, while he was alive. He was unable to do, just because of the specific interests that he had, took him down a path where he just was not able to do any of that. He wasn't able to share the hobby. All he was doing was being in a dank room, doing nothing. And I feel like that ends up coming off a little bit, like like you said, like a little bit sweeter. Because I think you can be understood in the specific stuff that we go to. You do end up knowing a lot of people who kind of like turtle down and be like, this is actually all I want to be known for. This is all like my specific life is about. It's like I'm 100% dedicated to this and only this. And then 
they don't actually get to know any people. All they do is that they have that, and that's basically it. So, I don't know. It ends up coming off very sweet at the end. They, they, they pulled it off again, basically. I did not expect this episode to get to the way it did <laughs> for how stupid of it is, it began. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, and it was very well done. And also, I'm a big fan of like this, like, this type of fight. This type of fight where they're, like, fighting and they're proving something. And it's something that not a lot of people understand, but it's just something that you have to do. It's kind of similar to why I think a lot of people still end up bringing up the Rock Lee fight. Because that's one half of that fight. Where it's one person who's fighting and they continue to fight and they continue to fight and they continue to fight past the point where it actually makes sense. They've already lost. There is no winning in this, but they still fight. And I feel like that's kind of what they're doing here, where both Shinpachi and uh, Toshi are fighting against each other. And they're fighting, and they're fighting, but they don't know why they're fighting. But they know that they should be fighting. <laughs> it's a very weird man thing <laughs> that I think gets up yeah. being put in a lot of yes. stuff. <laughs> it is the definition of macho, but in a way that I can like and respect. Where, like, th there's a lot of things that you can say about masculinity and macho-ness. This one always fucking rocks every time it happens. <laughs> every time it's here. Where it's just fundamentally two dudes beating the shit out of each other. They're getting cheered on. And they're going, yeah, let's just go out here and do it. I also really appreciate that uh, Kagura and uh, Gintoki are dressed up as the manager from Oshida Nojo. Which actually deals with a lot of the same things. Of fighting for your dream. And what it means to have a dream and to fight for it and try to get it and what it also means when you have the dream and then you realize that maybe this isn't actually what I want. Maybe the dream that I had isn't actually what I want it to be and now what is my life? Because that was my entire thing, was trying to get this and I don't have it anymore. So I thought that was like a really nice, like subtle reference of being like, yo, yeah, that's probably there for a reference, but at the same time, it could also be pulling a little bit from that so i thought that was cool and yeah uh great way to end this arc it is uh, it was again completely unexpected <laughs> i did not expect to end up liking the arc as much as i did when i remember seeing those two episodes going like eh, it's fine for us to just like whatever come back to this later it'll be fine it seems like a very silly dumb arc and all and like i was expecting it to go a little bit more like the previous one that was kind of like this the more comedy focused one and I feel like this one does a better job than that one of pulling it up at the end. Where that one, I feel like, tried to go for what this was going, but it came a little bit too late. And they had spent too much time on jokes that weren't funny. This one at least had Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> and that one yes. made it a little bit better. Yeah. Gintama's always kind of hit or miss where, like, are the ones that are focused purely on comedy actually going to be funny? Mm -hmm. um, this one, I think, had a good a good balance. Yeah. There's, 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 there's never one where it's always funny, but this one was like a good a good yeah. middle ground. And it had the heart. It's going for it. And again, I really do like... Again, it really feels like the animation quality increased for when they were beating the shit out of each other. <laughs> like, it looks a little bit more like um, uh, Hajime no Ippo for those brief moments where they're beating the shit out of each other in boxing. Yeah, it did have like very Hajime no Ippo like vibes to it. Yeah, which it uh, looked good. Like it, it, it didn't look like shitty. It looked good. No, it looked great. Um, so well done. Good, you did it fucking again, Gintama. And now let's talk about this next episode, which I told Zen up before here. I think it might actually be one of the worst episodes, <laughs> but maybe not because we started talking about it a little bit more and we'll 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 get into it now episode 164 is a two-parter uh the first part is called that matsuki matsutaki soup stuff tastes better than the real deal um this is part a so basically gintoki learns that there's another uh yorozoya group um uh, out there taking their jobs like the odd jobs crew is having their job stolen by someone who is better than them <laughs> uh and the reason they figure this out is that when he's out on patrol looking for a new job because kagura is complaining that they don't have enough rice to eat and how is a growing girl expected to grow if she doesn't have at least two-thirds of rice every single day so he has to go out and find it 
Um, they find out they they find out this other odds job crew. They go to their website and they see that they're just basically better versions of them. Um, they're also in silhouette, so like the Kentucky silhouette kind of looks like him. The Kagura one looks a little bit like Kagura, except for maybe a little bit um, more feminine, uh, sexified basically. And uh, Shimpachi is there as well, and he's like taking catalogs of what they do day to day and stuff like that. Where it's like, oh yeah, we took this on for a client, and then we went to the beach, and then we got champagne to celebrate. And then, <laughs> and then Shimpachi gets angry and says, "That's not what we're about, man." What we're about is what 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 about helping the old ladies cross the street? <laughs> what happens to cleaning out the gutters? What happens to cleaning out the trash? That's what the odd job screw is actually all about. <laughs> None of this highfalutin celebrity lifestyles that they're living. Um so they decide that through the website they find out where their headquarters is and they decide to do a raid on it. Uh they attack it and they find out that the people who are pretending to be them are the three dudes from episode 138 the black dudes yeah uh, <laughs> the same with the gun hand yeah the gun hand and then the person who was pretending to be uh gintoki is the robot bad guy from cobra the leader is the stainless boy a parody of crystal boy from cobra a shonen jump manga from the 80s <laughs> another Cobra reference that is completely lost on me because fucking Shonen Jump refuses to put Cobra on their app and translate it. Uh, but he's dressed up exactly like in Tokyo except for he has no hair. Yeah, he has no hair. <laughs> yep, just full on a robot. And it ends right when they see it. There's no, like, um, confrontation. It just ends and we go... <laughs> He just, like, clicks his little robot claw, and then it just ends. Yeah, click, click, and then we'll go right into part B, uh, which is titled, People Who Die, Stay Dead. Um, There's, like, Shimpachi meets a robot from the future, who tells him that he's here to protect him from rope. No, that happens at the end. Um, But he finds, like, this suspicious guy in the cabinets of Gintoki's lab and in, in Gintoki's office and they start to talk to each other um they discuss about how much uh he looks like Doraemon and uh he says I'm not Doraemon and then he does a bunch of Doraemon shit uh he gives him a bunch of Doraemon items cause Doraemon has like the um the Doraemon... Oh, fuck. This is very hard as someone who does not know Doraemon. He has, like, this uh, this thing that can take you anywhere. This little helmet thing that can help you fly. And a, like, light beam that can turn you from big to small. Uh, like a shrink ray of sorts. And he says, I have those too. And, um... He starts using them. And the go anywhere device is something that's, like... He opens it and then, like, he sees, like, a, a beach... And it's like a, just a picture of a beach. He goes like, uh-huh. how is this supposed to take me anywhere? And he's like, well, you just look at it. And it takes you there. And if you want a new location, you just swap the picture. <laughs> he goes like, I bet this beam won't even turn me big or small. And he, fla- he I bet it's just a flashlight. And he points the flashlight at his face. And we have like a really long scene of him just in the flashlight. And then he just clicks it off, and he goes like, no, 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 wait, 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 I swear this last one's real, it's legit. And he uses the last item, which does actually let him fly, but it only works um, vertically, no, horizontally. So it takes him um, from to left to right, basically, and it crashes him a whole bunch. He's like, do you have one that can take me vertical? So he gives him one that takes him vertical, but then that one like snaps his neck almost, basically. And he's like, yeah, you shouldn't really use that one, I tried to warn you. Um, this guy also says he's from the future and he got sent here from one of his, uh, future descendants. Um, I remember cause there's an in conversation where Shinpachi asks like, so who do I end up marrying? He's like, I can't tell you that because if I tell you that this girl is going to marry you in the future, you're going to stop trying. And any man who knows that this woman will marry him in the future will just simply <laughs> give up on ever trying with any woman <laughs> cause he knows that this is where his future lies. So I'm not going to tell you. Um, after he tells him, like, all this Doraemon stuff, uh, he says, like, yeah, don't worry about it. I also wanted to tell you that 
uh, the reason I'm here is that I want to protect you from robots in the future called Skynet. And then he tells him the plot of Terminator. And he says, don't worry, I'll protect you, uh, Connor. And he goes, and then they play like the dun 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 dun, but like in uh in, in like in Tama music style. Uh, he goes, Connor, dun 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 dun. Are you not Connor? Dun 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 dun. dun. He's like, no, I'm Shimpachi. And he goes, oh. And then he goes back in his little like cabinet. And he says, like, I got the wrong person. And that's where the episode ends <laughs> as he goes off. And yeah, it sure was a. Uh an episode it was an episode you can never this is the most episode of an anime that has ever been made and then here's the best part of this episode the new ed plays oh it does it yeah. does and this ed is fucking good <laughs> what is your it is basically an ed where it's one of the i think it's the first time they've ever done this where it's actually focused on the women of Gintama. gintama well, but not like in a way that's like, oh yeah, let me just show off all these women. It's more like them just kind of hanging out with the knucklehead men in their life, basically. Yeah, pretty much. It shows all of them. It shows. Um, it even shows the ramen lady from uh, from Katsura's story from way back. She's like hanging out with Katsura yep. and Elizabeth. We have Okita's sister. Literally, everyone's here. Anyone that you can imagine. The girl from um, Takets. Is it Takatsuji's group? She's in there too. She gets. I think she's like one of the last ones in there. Yeah, uh, yeah, t- uh, with the gun. Yeah, yeah. She's there with the gun. She's hanging out there. Which one of these panels did you end up liking a whole bunch? So, uh, it's the only thing that in any of the episodes that we watched for this one, the only thing that made me actually laugh. Because you know, I'll like smile at stuff, but I don't usually like laugh out loud at things that happen. The only thing that made me laugh, and I don't know why, because objectively, it's unfunny. Like it's not funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's when he's showing Shimpachi the little toy things, like his stupid equipment or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, he's like, these are all fake, aren't they? I bet this is just a flashlight, isn't it? And it is. And he's like, well, a flashlight's useful. And then it shows Shimpachi at, uh, at like a nudie magazine vending machine. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to, like, because he drops his coin under the vending machine when he's trying to hide so that nobody can see him, like, getting the Playboys from the vending machine. Mm-hmm. And the the part where he walks up and, like, taps him on the shoulder and just holds up the flashlight and, like, hands it to him and gives him this thumbs up and, like, slowly <laughs> walks away. I just started fucking dying. All right. I don't know why. But just Shimpachi, like, digging for that coin, and he pulls, like, his dirty arm out, and he looks so sad. And he, like, gently taps him on the shoulder and hands him the flashlight and just thumbs up and walks away slowly. All right. I was laughing my dick off. That one, that is a very funny moment. I also say, again, I really did like, I'm a big fan of, like, things scenes that last a little bit too long that scene where he's like this doesn't even work does it and he puts the flashlight to his face oh, yeah. and it just like when holds him. It on himself and it just sits like that yeah he doesn't even try and do like a bit he doesn't try like to yell at him all he does is like he like <laughs> turns off the light after enough time is passed to confirm he is not like anything's happening he just turns it off <laughs> That's funny. So that's why I'm like saying like it's probably not. We've seen worse episodes. It's not offensive, but I definitely feel like it's a yeah. It's one that happens. I think this is probably one that yeah. It's just it's one of those nothing episodes. You know, every now and again, Gintama's like, I don't feel like trying, so yeah. we're gonna drop a nothing episode. Yeah, and to be fair, I think the last episode ended with them saying next episode's just gonna be nothing. I think it literally <laughs> says yeah. next episode. What is- they tell you. Yeah, I, I appreciate that they actually are honest. They're like, this is just, you know, you might not, you might like it, you might not like it, you know, who knows, man. Listen, this is also not based off any man- a manga chapter, <laughs> so they're really just like going, we're gonna, we're gonna try some stuff, man. Here you go, and here's what we think is gonna be. I actually can't remember. No, it's, it, it's I think it's the end of the next episode where they go on a long tirade saying like we didn't have enough time we actually have five minutes extra open so they just start like talking a whole bunch (laughs) about saying like yeah we kind of 
We gotta kill time for the next five minutes. Let's go. Uh, and they start doing a recap. Oh, no, it's the end of the previous arc. Because the actual other arc that ends it is actually very nicely wrapped up. 163. But they wrap it up too quickly. So they have to figure out a way to be like, we have to kill time. Uh, he goes like, okay. And then they like reuse the fucking opening bit from that long song from the previous. I was like, no, you're just doing some stupid recap thing. Don't, <laughs> don't put that back up. He's like, uh, okay. And then they just figure out the answer. So just, we just kill time for the next five minutes and then we're good. It's like, you can't keep doing this. It's like, well, five minutes have passed. This is it. <laughs> Yeah, and that's episode 164. Now let's move on to episode 165 because this one, this is an episode of all time. Yeah, this sure is an episode of this show. This is maybe an episode that can be considered an episode. Yeah, so this is like, uh, if I had to put a list together of all the Gintama episodes that were episodes, this would be one of them. Yeah, where I said, like, give me an episode that is an episode of Gintama, I'd say, here's this episode. <laughs> Have here's luck this with... episode right here. Do you? Do I need to know anything about these characters? Not really. <laughs> this is nope. just an episode. <laughs> you don't really need to know anything because the only jokes in it, they explain to you in, like, three paragraphs at the top of the screen. Because it requires so much hardcore fucking pun Japanese knowledge. Yeah, you have to know, like, pronunciation of Japanese puns. Yeah, that in, yeah, okay, let's get into it. Episode 165, if it works once, it will work over and over again. Uh, so first of all, we start with live action Gintama, real reveal. Um, and we reveal that the live action Gintama, they, oh my god, dude, the way that they fucking frame this is so good. Because it looks like that video game Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, where it's like just... <laughs> It's like PNGs on the screen slowly moving back and forth. <laughs> and then they reveal the live action Gintoki, and it is uh, Gintoki and Kagura in mannequins. They've dressed up mannequins as uh, Gintoki and Kagura. Uh, and he says, starting this week, we'll be showing live action Gintama Revolution, which is a parody of Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> And he says, Love Will Save Hollywood. <laughs> That's the full title of the movie. Gintama Revolution, Love Will Save Hollywood. <laughs> uh, parody of Dragon Ball Evolutions. If you want to see a video on Dragon Ball Evolutions, we actually recorded one a long time ago. <laughs> so we're never, we're not doing it again. <laughs> For Shot and Archive. But you want to hear me, Zen, my brother, and my sister, I believe, talk about Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> Go track that down. Uh, it was a fantastic episode from what I can remember. Um, so yes, it starts with the live action. Um, they go to Sunrise Studio. Um, they say, hey, we're going to go to Sunrise Studio. And they also show that Shinpachi is just a pair of glasses. Like live action. <laughs> just a pair of glasses on the floor. Yeah, a pair of glasses sitting on a table, I think. Yeah. And they say, we're going to Sunrise Studios. Cut to Shinpachi, uh, who is talking to Gintoki. Uh, who's currently sick, and he says something to the effect of... I forget what he says exactly. Actually, does this... Um, I forget, do they go to the Gintama where they make the... Do they go to the... Okay, you know, I'll just bring it up. Okay, I think the when they, when they go to where they make the Gintama anime, they start complaining and saying, like, oh, man, look at this modern-day sweatshop we got going they around. They call it a sweatshop? And then the uh, Shipachi's like, don't badmouth them <laughs> for the way that they said, but the way the studio looks, you're going to give them a bad reputation on that. I just thought it was funny because when they're going through it, they're just like talking shit about how terrible it looks to work in here. <laughs> uh, then we cut to the episode where um, it starts with Gintoki, he's sick, and then he says something, and it require it makes Shimpachi start to daydream and think, and he thinks of the OP to the Gintama episode, and then the episode starts, and it says, like, basically a cold has gone around, and it's a pretty bad one, um, uh, Tai needs help, um, so Shimpachi's gonna be looking after her, 
and he seems very excited about taking care of his sister because he said it seems it's actually kind of cute where he's like oh man you got to take care of me so many times as i was a kid growing up and now i get to do the same for you now that you're sick it'll, it'll be basically my honor to just and also we just don't get to hang out with each other anymore we're so busy and this will be a nice way for i just kind of hang out and they're like you know what you're right shimpachi Let's just hang out and have fun. It seems like it's going to be a nice time. And of course it's ruined immediately by Gintoki and Chakra showing up who also are sick. Um, so Gintoki and Chakra start saying like, uh, Shinpachi, please take care of us. Please. I need rice. Give me all the rice you have. And also give me ice cream. That will help me with my cold. Give me everything that I could uh, possibly ask for in this situation. Um, and then he says, fine, whatever. I'll take care of all three of you. Uh, Kondo reveals that he's inside one of the drawers and he says, make that four, Shinpachi. And then Sha Sachan shows up and she was inside the pot and she says, please make that five. <laughs> I'm also sick. Uh -huh. um, so they all start to rest up in there and uh, Kondo and uh, Sachan start saying like, oh yeah, Kondo's like, listen, Shinpachi, I only had good intentions. They say it's easier to get over a cold if you give it to someone else. I was going to sacrifice my body to allow uh Tai to heal up faster that was always my intention and Sachan says like I was gonna do the same for Gintoki and he's like you're both lying you were just stalking them and you both helped just so happened to get sick and Sachan goes like oh, I can't help it you're right I think I absolutely love that I'm sick due to Gintoki I have uh Ginfluenza and yeah. I, I love uh -huh. every second about it. And then Kondo goes like, this is not just Gintoki's sickness. This is Thai sickness. I have Thai fluenza. And then they both started fiving, like, fighting back uh, fights over which one got sicker from the other person. Um, uh, and then uh, Tay says, I have an idea that will help potentially because there's a lot of sickness going around. And it's actually very hard with the air being so diluted for us to get sick. Uh, so he goes, okay, um, I'm going to use a leak. And then Kondo goes like, oh, then that's a great idea. My mom used to wrap my neck around leak to help me with my cold. So what are you going to do? And she decides to take him outside, make him completely like naked and make him hold two leaks and shove a leak up his ass and say, don't worry, you're going to heal yourself now. <laughs> it's like, how do I get healed? Because like you're healed when you're no longer feeling sick and you're completely frozen. Uh, let me throw some water on you. It's also snowing while this is happening. <laughs> so she is trying to kill Kondo out in the snow. Um, and then he goes like, well, at least um, Sachan starts to say like, can you please close the door? It's really cold in here. And then Kentoki like mounts her and he goes like, oh man, if you're cold, then the, the easiest way to heat up is to for both of us to be next to each other. So then he lays on top of her and says like, this is the quickest way for both of us to feel warm. And she immediately starts freaking out because she's assuming that he wants to just bone her in front of uh, the three people in the room. And she goes like, oh, man, that sounds amazing. <laughs> let's go. Let's do it. And then he quickly changes himself with the Otsu um, body pillow that I think uh, likely Shinpachi. It's Shinpachi's. And he's able to cartwheel her out of the room, and he goes like, there we go. There's less sickness in this room. I think we can finally heal. And then Hasegawa shows up, and he's completely fucking sick. He's got sickness all around him because he's homeless, and he just <laughs> lives in the sickness. <laughs> he, has a, he, has a, he has no clothes on. The sickness is being used as clothes. Uh, and he says, like, I'm not sick. I just came here to say, get better, Ty. Here, take this food. He's like, we're going to die if we take this from you. So, no, we're not going to take it. He's like, it's okay. Uh, Katra is also showing up. Um, and he goes, like, oh, that's a bad idea for Katra to show up with Kondo outside. He's like, it should be fine. I don't think Kondo's going to live very long for it to really matter. <laughs> um, Katra shows up. And Katsura has turned into Will Smith. And um, they say the reason is, is specifically the wordplay of the actor Will Smith and virus. Japanese pronunciation of virus sounds like Will's. I don't know how that's possible, but I'm going to say that, you know, it, Japan is a very hard language. 
<laughs> and uh-huh. somehow it's yeah. very easy to make wordplay out of nothing without even trying. So that makes sense. What doesn't make sense is that he then starts quoting Obama and going, yes, we can. <laughs> Yeah, he just keeps quoting Obama. And he keeps giving the thumbs up. And he goes, yes, we can. Um, He then starts sucking up the cold and flu, saying that we can get through this. Yes, we can. And uh, he basically cures everyone through the power of his Will Smith vacuum. Uh, And Kondo goes like, hey, it worked, Tay. I'm completely healed. And he goes to go help them out. Um, and he ends up sticking Will Smith in the ass with a leak, and this causes all the cursed energy of the flu to escape him, and it envelops the entire crew. Um, Shimpanchi wakes up from his futon, and he says, oh man, that was a crazy dream. Um, and then he notices everyone around him has turned into Ill Smith, um and it's turned into a, a will smith basically and it ends with everyone including all the voice actors just saying yes we can and the episode doesn't end it then cuts to gintoki who said no no the episode does end they played the ed the ed goes out f- completely through it all and then when it comes back <laughs> Uh, Gintoki comes back and he says, What the hell was that? (laughs) What did you just show me? (laughs) Because apparently he was daydreaming so hard, he daydreamed the OP, the the episode, and the ED. He says, What are you doing? Why was it winter? It's not winter right now, it's spring. And and then uh, Katsura says, Not Katsura, Kagura says, Well... We can't help it. This was in the manga during this time, and when it was in the manga, it was winter. It goes like that. No, oh, that doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> Why didn't you just plan it better? And that's where the episode ends. And no, and then it cuts. Uh, no, the, then it continues, and it cuts back to the the live action Gintama, and they are outside by a Gundam, and they say, "Hey, man." I think at this rate, we really will make it to a fourth year in the anime. <laughs> at the rate we're going. And then uh, it cuts to the Gundam, which is wearing the Shinpachi glasses. And Shinpachi just wonders one last time, why am I glasses? And that's where this episode ends. It is very hard to look at this episode and be like, what was going on when this was written? Let me see. When this chapter was written, it was chapter lesson two forty six. This had to have been not long after Obama actually entered office. For yeah, it was it was it was something. Um, a lot of stuff happens in this one. Yeah, there events take place. Events take place. Uh, Katra says yes, we can. Which is something which I then said, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Will Smith is not Barack Obama. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I really liked the um, the bit where uh, Kasra rolled up and he's he's ill Smith, and uh, they keep saying he's sick down to his jeans. <laughs> <laughs> like, like every single time Shapashi says something, they're like, "Oh my god, he's sick to his jeans." It's powerful. I also um, like that they put the Zura rap every single time he's on screen. <laughs> yes, Zura, uh, na, 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 za, Zura. <laughs> I also thought it was funny um, when Kondo was holding the leaks and uh, like in the snow naked. And Shimpanchi's like, he's gonna die. And she's like, no, it's fine. And she starts spraying him with a hose. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, But man, this sure was an episode. It really is. they faked me out when Gintoki was, like, mounting Sachan. Um, I thought it was going to be her, like, hallucinating because she was sick. Um, It completely faked me out that he used it as a trick to kick her out of the room. (laughs) That's how he knows how down bad she is for him, is that he's like, this is a great way to just get rid of her very quickly if I just do this. Very smart on his part. I also thought the same thing. I was like, oh, this is obviously going to be some kind of hallucination or just something that 
She just this is gonna show that she's just going completely sick. And she's like talking to like a dog or something. It's like no, he just is tricking her. <laughs> and he actually just mounted her for a bit to see how it goes. He's like this would only really work because Sajan would one hundred percent be down for everything that was going on here. Um and yeah, uh okay so here's some differences from the manga. Uh, Il Smith, his face is completely uh, obstructed by the black bar. So, in the anime, they put like a little like line. Um, they put like a little line through him to make it clear that it's not Will Smith. <laughs> like they were censoring the fact that this was someone who's supposed to look like Will Smith. Apparently, his face is just one hundred percent not visible in the manga version of this. Uh, and in the and in the manga it looks like everyone says yes we can at the end so okay it's a it's a silly little thing here there's a lot of things happening in this episode where I was while while I was watching it I was going okay like the live action bit was already enough for me to go all right and then it kind of kept going in like a another direction and there was like multiple fake outs as the things were going on I was like you know what I'm just gonna accept this as an episode of Gintama. I'm just going to take, absorb this, and then talk about it, and then figure it out. It is something. I'm glad that I watched this episode before we recorded it, because if I had spent any time before this one, I would have said, this episode does not seem real. <laughs> this it feel, there's a very, yeah, like... it was like a fever dream. I'll give them this. It does feel like a fever dream. Maybe that's what they were going for in, because everyone's sick. So they probably were trying to give it a fever dream like quality. I think it worked too well. Cause if I someone had told me that this was actually just a thing that happened, I would have been like, that can't be real. <laughs> this is a silly show, but there's just no way for any of this for it to make any form of sense for it to happen. But it definitely does happen. So there we go. That's episode 165 again. Tama down in the bag. Easy to go. And next week... We'll go. We'll talk about episodes 166, 167, 168, 169, and 170, and that will be another little tiny arc with the Tama Quest arc. But thankfully, that one is only four episodes long, so all we get is the 166 one. And then the, the week after that, it will be um, 171, 172, 173, 174, 175, and 176. And the reason is is because we're actually coming up to a serious arc which is the Red Sparta arc, which takes place after it. So for that one, we have to make sure to watch all the episodes in one go. Otherwise, that episode is just going to get shit on from us for no good reason, because it, it does not fit in the tune with the actual serious arc that we're watching. <laughs> so the betterment for it, for that one, um, two weeks from now, we will watch six episodes instead of five. But that's the plan. And all right, that's also the end of Shonen Archive, everyone. Woo! It's good to be t back talking about Gintama Zen. I've missed it. Yeah, that was something. Yeah, I'm glad to be back. It it really shows the full breadth of everything going on. To just sit back and say, like, it's kind of crazy that all these episodes just kind of exist. You never know yeah, what you're... just things that people... You, you never know. You, you literally just don't know. Just sometimes I'll go on here and it's like, I don't know, maybe this will be uh, an affectionate parody of some fucking thing from the 1970s. Uh, or it's going to be uh, extremely heartfelt looking into the human condition. I just don't know sometimes with the show, which makes yeah, it fun. it's insane to me that this is the same show where Okita's sister died of, like, cancer or something, and they were, like, eating spicy chips on the rooftop and crying because of the, the, her dying. And then uh, the same show, uh, Katsura gets a uh, leak shoved up his ass and unleashes the plague. Of Will Smith. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Katsura Will Smith gets a leak up his ass, they just and don't, the plague comes out. They just don't make it like that anymore. They literally they really just, don't, you know? They, they really <laughs> don't. They really don't. There's no time. Robot Lady, was that robot made that you have extreme beef with? <laughs> what is it called? The robot made, um... Oh, Robocon. Robico. Yeah, Robico. Robico's not out here doing that, I assume. When, I have... you, when you said robot made, I thought you meant the one from Gintama. No, like, no, no. <laughs> no, you don't have beef with her. I'm talking about the actual one they had beef. The yeah, one who was added. That's Robico. The one that was added to Jimbuti before Gojo. Um, 
A bunch of characters at this point have been added to Jumpudi before Gojo, because Gear Fucking 5 was able to be added before Gojo somehow. Yeah, I, I assume there's some reason why they can't add JJK. There like has to be. The, the it, it, or it's that fucking gotcha, isn't it? They refuse to let Gojo oh, be on a... Handsome them. Parade? Yes. Uh, maybe? I don't know, but like they're in you know, like Monster Strike and stuff. That's true, but that's not a Shonen Jump uh, gotcha. I guess that's true. Yeah, that that was the same thing where I was the argument that I was making for Gear Five is that Gear Five is not going to show up in uh, Jumpudi before a One Piece gotcha got it because that just makes no sense. Why would you put in a hype character from your thing in something that is not related to your series first? It just doesn't make any sense. It'd be like if Super Saiyan Goku came out today and we were saying like, "Oh, Jumpudi's going to get Super Saiyan Goku first. It's like no. Dokkan would get it first, and then they would be allowed to have <laughs> Goku, basically. Um, but yeah, finally happening. Yeah, there has to be something related to the fact of that gotcha. So maybe once that gotcha comes out, maybe Jumpudi can finally have it. But that, it's it's crazy to me that it's it's like three, two, three years ongoing. Zero Jujutsu Kaisen characters added. Just makes no sense. And with that, that's the end of the episode, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you guys next week, hopefully. I'm going to make sure to watch all these episodes <laughs> before. <laughs> so I'll be able to watch it and talk about it next week. That seems to be the main problem with me seeing it, is that occasionally my work will just give me work, and I'll be like, oh, damn. But now that my work is uh, getting less work, which is scary for me, because <laughs> um, I am... Um, Paid by the hour, not by salary. <laughs> but at least that does give oh, me a little bit more time. Yeah. yeah, it's very unfortunate. But it gives me more time to watch anime, at least. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next Shonen Archive. Zen, say goodbye. And as always, if you want... Oh, fuck, I forgot this part. We've been recording so long, I forgot. Uh, if you want to see more Zen, you can go over to Zen's channel. where You can see where he does Shonen and Chill, where he talks about the up, the current chapters in Shonen Jump of the ones he sees. Not at One Piece yet, but if he ever makes it there, we'll make sure to do Shonen and Chill Extra Chill to talk about One Piece. <laughs> you know what's funny is that when I put that out, it's like someone says, like, so would that be a one-time thing? And I said it would be there for as long as we both were... There was a chapter release, and he was like bitchin'. <laughs> he was just like, that sounds great. <laughs> it's like, damn, Zen's fans are fucking cool. <laughs> they're, they're yeah, just like, man. Shonen and Chill fans are rad. Yeah, down for it. And if you want more me stuff, you can always go on the channel where you'll, feel, you'll find plenty of me around. And that's it, everyone. Thank you very much. And as always, if you want to show support for the show, you can always just leave a like, comment, and... But honestly, watching is enough for me on this case. Usually the other videos have enough to follow it back, but if you want to help out, that is the way to do it. No worries. Uh, there's going to be changes to the YouTube ad system soon, too. So if you just see a buttload of ads show up, it's because of YouTube, not because of me. I typically try and keep it down. They, they're the ones who add, like, 5,000 ads in hour long videos so we'll see how that looks out yeah. when november hits <laughs> but until uh -oh. next time everyone we'll see you guys in the next shonen archive say goodbye zen goodbye, for real everybody i yeah. said it faster than you that time hell yeah bye everybody <laughs>